welcome to another one of my vintage i-fi videos. In today's video we'll be talking about this Atachi SR304L receiver. Pretty much the same as the SR304, just got a long wave attached to it. And there's a few other models in the range, 504 and etc. Uh, made in Japan, 1978, that kind of time. 18 watts a channel. So um, yeah, just to give you my thoughts, if I turn it on, uh, I've got no air or anything attached, but it's, the meter's in a, in a little bit of a, an unusual place there, kind of like usually at the end, or here, next to this knob, but kind of like pushed across there. So there, yeah, a little bit unusual there. Uh, and that, that's just, that's all it lights. I'm well, sorry, the display all lights up. May not be able to see it with these lights, but it does all light up. Uh, there's quite a few bulbs across the top. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Anyway, I shall turn it off for the time being and just show you um, the back before I continue, really. I uh, just want to show you that Unfortunately, a little bit of a downside of this is it's not got many inputs. Uh, you've got your normal aerial connections there, but for actual input wise, you've just got phonio and you've got tape, and that is it. So if you're plugging a CD player or any other uh, item you want to plug into it, any other unit, you're gonna to have to go through the tape, and that means click, you know selecting tape input from the front, and that's it, and you've got your two sets of speakers. So it's pretty minimal around the back, uh, and your aerial fix out, isn't it? That's pretty much all of them do. So if I spin it back round. Um, we're going on the front here, you've got your normal power button, headphones, and you've got two sets of speakers. Now these controls, the bass, treble, uh, and balance, but we're still with the bass and treble. These go down in notches of two. Uh, a lot of amps and receivers are in ones, but these, this is a two one, and they're clicky. They're the click type, but you can stop it in between, so you can really, really fine tune it if you want to like. Uh, it's no sudden jump in twos. That's the same with a treble as well. The uh, balance has got a little click in the middle and the volume clicks all the way around, every, every part of it's a click, you can't stop it in the middle. So you can kind of get a scenario, which I'll get up here, if I've got it up here, and I've been trying it out and whatever, and, and with a few of these amps that have got this kind of like scenario with a clicking in the volume, you can get a level where you, you know, your missus has gone to bed or whatever, and you think, oh, I'll just have it on, oh, it's a bit low, a bit too low, and just one little click, and you think, oh, a bit too loud now, like, so it's no in-between, so no deal breaker really, but you haven't, you know, all I'm saying is you haven't got full control of the volume there. Uh, then you've got your source button. This is the button your tape monitor source. This is where you'd be plug, you know, t pushing this in for your tape, you know, your cassette deck, um, your CD player, anything you've got else you've got plugged into that tape input at the back because that is the only other input apart from your your vinyl and your phono input, you know, your vinyl. Uh, then you've got your medium and long wave select, and this this comes into play when you click it over to AM. Then you pick long wave or medium wave. A bit of a funny way of doing it, but that's the way they do it there. You've got your FM, then you've got your phono uh, input there. On this button here, you've got, uh, this is basically your mono and stereo button uh, for FM and that, so that's that. Then you've got your loudness button there. Then you've got your subsonic filter button there for your vinyl. If you're getting a bit of rumble in between tracks and that, you can press that. And it obviously ain't going to eliminate it all, but it's going to tone it down a little bit for you. So that's that. So that's the fan, obviously, you're tuning off your uh, tuning dial. It's quite... It's quite, it's not bad, you know what I mean? It's not bad, it's got a little bit of weight to it. It's not a bad uh, tuning valve, it feels quite nice as it happens. All brushed aluminium, all the knobs are, I think this is, they kind of like got an aluminium knob stuck over a plastic inside um, kind of thing there. And th th this is pretty much the same, I think. Um, but it's got a nice feel to it, and all these knobs have got a nice feel to it. So all in all, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. Okay, yeah, on eBay, I don't know if I mentioned it, on eBay you're probably going to pay £40, £50 pound for one of these. This is what they seem to go for. Uh, this, you know, depending on condition and whatever, this is in nice condition. It's, uh, you know, got a few slight marks on the top there, whatever, so it's been resting on it. But other than that, the fascia and everything else, it's, it's in really nice shape. Okay, so what did I think about it? Um, if I go through a few different things that I've uh, done with it, um, and for most of these amps, all these amps I'm now using just um, two sets. I mean, I've used these little speakers up here and it's, uh, they sound nice, you know what I mean? You've got it on low volume, but obviously going stairs, I'm gonna start kicking up the volume and things can change. So I've gone just going with two sets of speakers, really, uh, giving me a good idea, I think, you know, how it sounds. It's the Wolfdales, which are a bit, they're the Wolfdale Delta 70s, and they're good, they're good little, you know, good size speaker, really. Um, and they're, they're quite nice sounding speaker. They may not be ultra detailed or anything like that, but. They've got a nice base to them. The, the, the base is forward, but it's nowhere near as forward as these Wolfdale Diamonds, you know, crazy forward. But the base is a little bit forward, so they're a little bit bassy, them speakers. And they're quite bright as it happens as well. But uh, And also the other ones I'm using is the, the, the recently acquired Morden Shorts uh, floor standards, the um, MS25Is. Uh, they're, they're more detailed than the, um, a little bit more detailed than the, uh, 
fourth dowels, uh, but they're quite a bit more bass shy, you know what I mean? The, the, the bass is nowhere near as forward. It, it's, it's a bass shy speaker, even though they're in cabinets and they're like floor standing in a fairly sized cabinet, really. Um, you, you would expect um, a bit more bass out of them, but anyway, they've got a smaller speaker inside, so probably, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons as well. But yeah, so that's what I've been you know, uh, trying this out with. Um, right, okay, I'm going to go over to the uh, plain vinyl first of all, and I'm, I must remember to try and incorporate this in more of these videos when I'm reviewing these uh, receivers and amps because I keep forgetting I kind of like brush the vinyl aside and it's probably one of the main things that you know people are picking these up for now because you know vinyl sounds great in this old stuff you know what I mean it really does it's, it's kind of like this was made for vinyl kind of thing you with me um, where maybe new amps and that like you know depending on price range and whatever maybe across the board kind of thing I think this, you know, these are all kind of finely tuned for vinyl. I think, you know, you're probably getting your best sound out of the vinyl than you are in playing back CDs, etc. So I should try and concentrate on that and not forget that. Okay, uh, with the vinyl, um, I, I'm only matching this up. I've got two turntables, but to, you know, make it fair and everything, you know, you, you're going to pay for this, you're going to pay, kind of balance it with what you're going to pay for the turntable, what you're going to pay for the speakers kind of thing. I've got a Technics, I can't remember the model number, but it's, I think they sell up about 70 or 80 pounds second hand these days. It ain't a bad, so it ain't brilliant, but it ain't bad, you know what I mean? It's got it's, got its own Technics cartridge in it, but all in all, you know, it gives a, a good sound, like, it's a, you know, it's a reasonably good sound. Um, yeah, so with the vinyl, I found, um, overall this amp is a little bit bassy anyway. This amp is it's a bit bassy, this amp, but with the vinyl, it was a bit bassy. Uh, with the Morden Shorts, I left it as it was because that bass was helping that speaker, being bass shy. You know, if you're buying an amp and speakers, make sure, I, I think, you know, stay clear, I think, yourself, of a speaker that's bassy and an amp that's bassy because then all of a sudden you, you've got so much bass, you've got too much, you know what I mean? You, you kind of want to counterbalance. If you've got a, a bassy amp, you want to get a slightly less bassy speaker, I think, you know what I mean, to kind of match it. So this is where all this speaker matching goes on and everything, I think, you know what I mean? Uh, so much like the treble, I should imagine, you know, if you've got a, uh, an amp that's giving out too much treble, you, you're matching up with a speaker, it's got a lot of treble in it as well, you're going to be inundated with treble, like, so it's it's, bad, it's like a set of scales, really, you know, what you've got on one side, kind of try and balance it off on the other side and get a, a level playing feel, so to speak. Okay, um, yeah, I found it a little bit shy, uh, where are we, a little bit bassy, so, um, yeah, like I say, with the uh, Morning Shorts, I was keeping it where it was, but with my uh, Wolf Dowels, I was knocking that down just one notch, but it's, it goes down in twos here. These go down in twos. So I was just knocking it down one notch just to take the edge off of it. And with the Morning Shorts, I was keeping it level, depending on what I was playing. And now and again, I was clicking it forward a notch there. Just to, you know, I'm not one of these people that start taking this all the way round now. You know, I've pretty much learned that, you know, you want it in the zero kind of range bracket. Obviously, sometimes you need to give it a little bit of help, but only a little bit. You don't want to go too mad. Um... Yeah, uh, the vocals were nice and clear, it sounded nice, the, 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 the vinyl, the, the turntable sounded really nice, it really did, you know, it's, it's a nice sounding for the turntable, you know, no faults at all on that, um, vocals, everything sounded nice, percussions, cymbals, you know, everything sounded nice, it, it really did, like, on, both, on both sets of speakers, like I say, it sounded that bit more clearer on the Morden Schultz, um, yeah, like I say, with the bass in the middle, that, that, that helped it out, definitely. Uh, we weren't getting a th really thud bass for them speakers. That, that you're kind of missing that a little bit. But other than that, it's, it's good. You know, the power-wise, let's just talk about the power as well. To, to get a reasonable kind of volume, you know, up here, I've got it on number one, two, say, you know, during the day, when the missus go to bed, one kind of thing. But uh, downstairs, bigger room, seven metres, or seven, sorry, seven yards, just don't get it right, seven yards by 3.5 metres downstairs. And to get a nice... Kind of like you can hear it nicely. Number four, I'm sticking this on about number four, quite loud. But to get the room rocking, I'm cranking this up to number five. Like I'm, I'm, it's halfway, like you know, what I mean, to get the room rocking, you wouldn't want to go much louder than that. I don't think you may knock out a six, and it would be really rocking kind of thing. You know, what I mean, it's, it's still some, it's still some room in it. You know, what I mean, it's not a full volume or nothing. But you, you know, you may think, well, it's quite a long way around five. But you know, most of my amps are four. You know, this is just a tag. Ted shorter at five, like you know, Ted more at five. That's it. Other than that, there's nothing to worry about. Like you and me, just just want to kind of give you an idea of what it will fill that room up on number five, and the room will be rocking. You know what I mean? It was more rocking with the Wolf Dowels because they got the more bass to them, and they're kind of like a rocking speaker. You know what I mean? They're a bigger sound kind of speaker than the uh, the Morden Shorts. Uh, they're more of a refined sound compared to you know comparing them two speakers together. So um, yeah, if you if ever a party. And rocking away, you'll be you'll be digging out the, the uh, wolf tails, sticking them on there, like in a, you know, if you want to be bobbing about and everything else. But he got into a dance, then got a bit carried away. Uh, right, okay, um, we'll go over to the radio now. With the radio, 
uh, with all these really, you need a decent aerial, you need a decent aerial, I've got one here, I mean I used to kind of get one of these dipoles aerials, like indoors, obviously if you get a roof aerial and one in the loft, even better, like, but this is suffice indoors, not, not just a piece of wire that I sometimes use up here just to as quickly distance the same myself. Downstairs we've got one of them dipoles up uh, across the uh, window there. Um, yeah, you need a decent aerial because without, you know, a decent aerial, you're going to get, even with a decent aerial, you're going to get slight issues and, and whatever, like, you know, whisking and that you're going to get it not i'm not i, I haven't heard a top of the range uh receiver um vintage so i can't tell you like what this is compared to an actual top of the range where you see these morantes i know six hundred thousand pound on ebay just the, the receiver or even just the tuner with these oscilloscopes and everything else built in um but as it is i mean you've got to expect this if you want actual crystal clear you're gonna to have to go and get yourself a dab kind of receiver and, and you're kind of taking away the fun of it i think you know what i mean the, the sound that i'm listening to this is this is the sound i want to listen to rather than that really and you're, you're only going to hear it in a very very quiet passages that's if you hear it at all like you know depending on volume and, and if you're really listening out for it kind of thing if you're going oh let's, 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 let's listen to that sound um, other than that, you know, it's fine. Decent aerial, you definitely need a decent aerial with these, and it, and it sounds fine, you know, not, not just a piece of wire, so to speak. Saying that, it still works, but you can expect a few more crackles, pops, and whistles, and whatever, and this thing. Um, yeah, with the radio, uh, let's start, I found it, yeah, it was basically the radio, you know, I was turning it down, like, say, uh, minus two, like first notch on the Wolf Dows, maybe, you know, just, just come over a little bit more bassy of the radio, maybe minus four, like I say, they're, they're a bassy kind of speaker anyway, but minus two generally, uh, what have I got here, the treble was fine, in fact, with the radio, um, I, just, I was just knocking the treble down one, just just knocking it down one maybe, you know, on certain tracks, but other than that, really, in the middle, like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm being a bit more meticulous here, I think, of where I'm putting these controls, um, yeah, the radio sounded nice, you know what I mean, it did, it was a nice sounding radio, it was nice, so there was no problem with that. Uh, and we're going over to the CD now, and the CD, to be honest with you, is pretty evenly matched with the radio. It was pretty matched with the radio, the CD, you know, um, exactly the same, basically, I would have said, you know, I mean, they're, they're pretty pretty well matched. Um, yeah, so with the Wolf Dales, maybe minus two, maybe minus four, depending uh, what kind of track and how bassy it was, but yeah, minus two generally, and the treble... Um, yeah, the treble I probably, you know, it's, it's probably where it was as it happens, the treble on, on, on the uh, CD. It's probably, it's fine in the middle of the treble. Um, so that really covers it, yeah. Um, all in all, like I say, it was, it's quite a sweet sound. It's quite a nice sounding amplifier. It's still got a bit, even though you've got it on number five, it's got it's still got a bit of weight to it. Like, you know what I mean? It weren't like, it, it was no good kind of thing. It's got a fair bit of weight to it. Um, yeah, quite punchy and that. So, um, yeah, all in all, uh, quite a good good little receiver for what you're going to pay for it, 40 or 50 quid. This, you know, it's, it's definitely worth looking at. It, it, it's, it's a good little receiver. This is quite nice, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with this at all. Well, I've got um, a video up there of some sounds that I play through it. Like, it's a direct feed from the headphone socket uh, into the recorder uh, of Funky Disco. Uh, just a track, pardon me, just a track I picked up off of YouTube. I thought, you know, it's quite a good sounding little track. Um, just to give you some kind of idea, maybe you should like, have a listen to that, pump it through your speakers or something, give you more of an idea, and actually muck about with the tone controls as well to give you an idea what it would be like in different positions. Okay, so that's it. Yeah, the only downside, like I say, really, there is a downside to this, you know, I've got to admit it, it's the lack of inputs. That is a real note. It's a shame just one more adult and two more would be fantastic, just a lack of inputs. But other than that, you know what I mean, like I say, it's a good, it's a quite a nice looking receiver as well, I think, you know what I mean? All in all, I think if you've got this, you'll be pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, just say, it definitely would help uh, a pair of speakers that are a little bit bass shy. If you've got a speakers that are a bit bass forward, then you would have to uh, knock down the bass. And to be honest with you, I've tried it with these wolf dolls, just quickly talking about that. And, and now, these are so bass forward, you're going to minus six, like, you know what I mean? And, and, and even minus eight, I'm not kidding you, and you're just ruining the sound. It's just a waste of time. If you, if you, if you start putting your bass back that far, then you, you, you're going too mad, like, you know, it's just it's just not worth it, you know what I mean? So it's just, if you're buying this, don't buy the Wolf Dells, whatever you do. You'd be, you'd be singing them both in the bin, thinking they're both rubbish, and they're not. It's the speakers letting you down. Okay, that's it. I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with something else. Until then, I'll see you later.